Pterodactyl here, and here we are on part three of the Ride Master, the Bowen's Ride Master. Now remember at the end of part two, I couldn't get it to shift, and I said we're gonna have to dive into that. So here we are. Got the wheels off. And I was reading the comments on uh, part two, and I did see in the diagram, because I actually watched the video too, because even though I was in it. And I noticed it showed the cable running through here. And I had it running over the top, and I had the wire running over the top when they're supposed to run through here. And I thought the same thing as one commenter thought, that yeah, that looked pretty stupid when you're running that through there. But this is stationary. This doesn't move. You know, the whole thing pivots. Everything pivots. So these aren't going to get chopped off. It's not like this thing spins. So the whole thing pivots. So that's how they're supposed to be. They're supposed to run through that, that pulley. So we got that out of the way. And then also in the manual it showed me where the plug is for the gear oil. So I already loosened it. Probably should have checked that before I took it for a ride. Once the guy had drained all the gear oil out of it. But there it is. It's in there. And it looks pretty clean. But it's going to get changed now. So I need to uh, get this weight off the back. And it's pretty rusty. So I may have to do my heat quench trick, which we have a video on, if this doesn't come off. Oh, I don't think it's gonna come off. Oh, there we go. So I sprayed it with some PV blaster. I didn't wanna put an impact on it and break something. So I'll get this off, and then we'll drain all the gear oil out of it. And pull this back half off here so we can take a peek inside and see why this thing won't shift. Get some speed out of it. All right. I don't know how heavy that thing is. But I don't want it to hit the floor. There, I'll put that under it. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. You don't want to be reaching in there trying to grab that. That's how you throw your back out or pull a muscle. So there's that. So in the manual, it said this bolt back here is also the drain plug. And that's all full of years of dirt buildup. Hear that hammering out there? That slippers. That slip dog out there working on his uh, craftsman or sear. Oh, that was pretty loose. That's good, at least. I'd rather have it loose than rusted in there and I can't get it out. That's why I'm using hand tools. I don't want to impact stuff and then have it break. Cause more problems.
Huh. There ain't no grain plug. But it said in them instructions, grain plug. You go over to the over to the manual and show you that they said that's a grain plug. All right, here we are. There's the fill plug, which I took off. I got this wheel off. Here's that shifter, drain plug, pointing right at that bolt on the bottom. You know, not only is this a crude machine, these, uh, this manual is crude. Because it doesn't even explain about shifting that. There's nowhere in this manual that tells you anything about shifting it. If you've got this AB301 or AB201, this is how you shift it. Doesn't say anything in there. Here's our lubricants. General purpose grease. Standard gear lube. Do not use EP type. Summer, 140. Winter, 90. So we'll probably put 80, 90 weight in it. Engine oil, refer to the engine manual and air cleaner. Check daily. What if you're not driving it? They still want you to go out there and check it daily? Like somebody's gonna steal your oil? What if it sits for like two weeks? You gonna go out there every day for two weeks and check it? I don't think so. All right, let me keep pulling them bolts off on the back and get that cover off. I'm gonna shove this screwdriver in there. I bet you this thing is all sludged up. Oh yeah, look at that. It's all gooey. Yeah, this is the drain. It's all full of boogers and nastiness. See if anything comes out now. Let me get a bigger screwdriver to shove in there. Oh, look at that, man. It's going in there, but it's like mud. We know there's gear oil in there. I showed it to you. Oh well, I'm just going to have to pull the back off and I'll just have to put a big pan under it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this off too. I already got this loosened up. We got to separate this from that. And as you can tell, this looks like it had broke at one time. And somebody welded it up. Now this is cast. Cast steel. Maybe, or it might just be plate steel. Looks like they did a pretty decent job. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around and remove the rest of these bolts. And then we'll pop this off. All right, I got all the bolts out. I left one in the top. And you can see it's already starting to drain out. I don't know how heavy this thing is. Slippers! What? Get over here and help me. Real busy right now, all right? Yeah, well this is more important than that. Sears. My antique stuff's more important than yours. I don't think so. Alright, what do you need? You gotta get on that side. This thing I don't know how heavy it is. <laughs> Probably super heavy. But we gotta lift oh. it off. A little vent ain't gonna do nothing. Uh, uh, gotta get this bolt out. 
There's a wrench right there. Three quarter. Right. Got it? Yeah. in the top of here and that's what shifts our gears and here's our chain double roll 30 uh oh somebody's here all right so our shifter here it's got this fork and this fork fits into here And then that's what shifts this down here, these gears. These are those thread gears they're talking about. So what I think it happened is, I noticed that there's a cotter pin in this shaft. And this is above that cotter pin. I think this is supposed to be below the cotter pin. Or maybe it's supposed to be a ball. Or maybe this is bent. Maybe this isn't supposed to be bent. So this was sliding up and probably slid out of there. But this chain is awfully sloppy. So I should probably find me some number 35 double roller chain and replace it. And I also noticed that there's a snap ring that's supposed to be on the back of this is gone. And I also noticed that this bearing in here was held in with a snap ring also, an internal snap ring. And I think when I was trying to get that pulley off, I think I broke the housing back here because now that's bouncing around. So we'll get a closer look at that once I get this chain off. But I want to get this shifter out of here and stick it in there and see if that's going to shift this, these thread gears. And then I'll have to make a new gasket because the gasket tore. But that's no big deal. And let's see what's in the bottom of here down here. Looks like there's some stuff in here maybe. Oh yeah, see here's a piece of that housing where that snap ring held that bearing in. But I should be able to come up with a way of keeping that from moving. Now that I broke it. Yeah, look at all that. Old gear oil. probably where the oil is supposed to come out through that bolt hole. I'm sure there's a passage somewhere. It's probably in the trans itself. But there's probably more nastiness like this in there. Look at that stuff. Man. And it smells funky. Yeah, I didn't know gear oil would do that. Look at that. So we got some cleaning to do. And some inspecting and some more disassembly. All right, after I got all the crud scraped off of this rod, then I had to take a file and kind of file it a little bit because it was kind of boogered up, flared out. Then it slid right out. So this is what happened. This is why it wouldn't shift. 
Had I known how one of these things worked ahead of time, I probably could have got it to ship. So this was on here like this. And like I said, this cotter pin, which most of it's wore off, is supposed to keep this rod from coming out. So this thing got bent. And when it bent it, see, look, it was just doing this. It wasn't meshing with nothing. So now that I got it in there, you can see down here, I'll see, that turns that thread gear. But look at all the crud on the end of this spline from that gear oil not being changed in 60 years. So now it's keeping it from keeping it from coming back. See now it's starting to go. It's starting to mesh. And that would have gave us our higher speeds. So at least we know this is gonna work. So I have to go on the inner screen, find me some double roller number 35 chain. See about fixing this bearing that I screwed up back there. By trying to get that pulley off, I should have waited. But I got impatient and I tried to get that pulley off and all I did was end up breaking that housing back here. Stupid, stupid me, stupid. So we'll get this off, I'll get this gear off. We'll check that out, we'll get that secured. Put a snap ring back on there. Get this housing cleared, cleaned out, get all that crap off of there. Make a new gasket. Put it all back together. See what kind of speed we got now. See if we can climb that hill. Man, this thing got some nastiness in there. So now I want to take this chain off and I'm looking for the master link and I find the master links right here. And look what's missing the clip that holds the master link. The only thing holding this on is that nasty sludge. That was the only thing that kept this from coming off. So good thing we took this apart. Cause look, that nasty sludge is holding that master link on. So that clip is missing. There, now it come off, it fell on the ground. That's all right, I'm getting a new chain. So then I'm trying to find something to clean this stuff off. I'm sitting there scratching at it with a screwdriver. You know, that seems to be the only thing. And I'm like, well, there's gotta be something to get it off. So I tried kerosene, that didn't work. I tried mineral spirits, that didn't work. I tried gasoline, that didn't work. So then I thought, well, let's try some of these cleaners. So I tried some awesome, that didn't work. This is simple green. That didn't work, that won't take it off. Spraying that on there. So I thought, you know, this is PB Blaster, let me try that. So I'm spraying that on there, and that seems to, to work somewhat. It's loosening it up, see? I still got a scratch at it, but it's a little better. Now there's one other thing I want to try and I don't have any of it here. I thought I had some and that's that purple power. Because one time I had a, a generator come in and some knuckleheads poured gear oil in the generator because it was low on oil. And it turned it all nasty like this. And that was the same thing. We are trying to clean it, find something to take that off that generator because it stuck the valves and everything. And we put that purple power in there and that stuff dissolved it and it all came out. And we were able to get that generator running but it already ruined it. I mean it ran and it worked but it used a lot of oil so you always had to keep filling it with oil. So it must have ruined the ring. So I want to try that but this, this PV blaster seems to be working. It's dissolving it. I couldn't get any of that to come off this easy a few minutes ago. So we'll take that chain off and dig a little deeper, but we need to get this clean if we want this thing to work right.
This was a job for Mike Rowe. This was a dirty job. Look at all that nastiness that came out of that gear case. Look at that. I don't think that was uh, gear oil that they poured in there. I think that was something else because gear oil's got a distinctive smell to it and that stuff does not smell like gear oil. And I had to get that out. I tried, like I said, I tried everything. I even went and I thought, oh, you know, I'm gonna get some gunk, engine degreaser, maybe that'll work. No, that didn't work. Remember last thing I said purple power, I was gonna get some purple power? Well, that's what I did. I poured purple power in here. You could see how much I filled it up to there. And I had to let it sit for about four or five hours and that loosened it up and cleaned it out. But to get it out of here, these are the two tools I used. This gasket scraper and this big screwdriver. And you can see I got it clean. That's as clean as I can get it. And it shifts, we can shift it now. So you know what I had to use? You know what else I used? I used this. Good old fashioned elbow grease. That's what cleaned it out. I had to meticulously scrape and clean. So I got the chain. I'm gonna order the chain. And we're gonna make a gasket. And I'm gonna show you how to make a gasket. So this is how I learned to make a gasket when I worked in that factory years ago. Because we used to have to make a lot of gaskets. So I went to the auto parts store and I got me some gasket paper. And got me a big piece of gasket paper here. And then you just take a hammer. Get out of the way there. And this is how they showed us how to make a gasket. Lightly tap. And this will make your gasket. See how it's cutting that? No cutting with scissors and razor knives. There's your dinner. Now we gotta do the holes. That's what this is for. Guys in the factory would use a ball bearing and just hit the ball bearing, or again, you could use, you know, the peen of something. But some guys would make, take an old ball bearing, because we used to work with big, giant bearings at that place and weld a little piece of round stock to it for punching holes in the gasket. And I saved this tool from when I worked there. A 
Learn a lot from them guys in that factory. Now all that stuff is gone. There's your gasket! Yay! Like that trick, don't you? Looks store bought, don't it? Hey, 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 look at that. Start making them. Sell them to these Ride Master guys. Oh, secret's out, too late. All right, now, since we're waiting on parts, we gotta move on to the muffkin. Cause remember the muffkin broke off. So now I gotta get that piece of muffkin out of there. Now that's three quarter pipe tap is what those treads are. Same pipe tap for like old water lines or gas pipe. So luckily I got me a three quarter pipe tap to chase that out with. So when I go to make my custom exhaust. So now I gotta get that little piece out. It's only in there about a half an inch. And I don't want to do my heat and quench trick on it because it's, you know, I'm not taking a good solid piece of pipe out of there. I'm just trying to get what's left of one. So I just use a sawzall and just kind of cut through that little piece that's in there. And chisel it out of there. Carefully. Cut in a few spots here and I'll chisel it out. Don't cut too deep though. And then I'll be able to chisel it out and we'll chase it out with a tap. Just gotta be careful. You don't have to run the saws off full speed. Oh yeah. Getting that old booger out of there. Woo! All right, now we'll get the three quarter pipe tap and some lubricant. We'll chase them treads out. All right, now when you do this, you know, make sure the valve is closed. So that way when you blow it out, you don't blow any stuff into the piston area because you're gonna have to blow it out with compressed air to get all the nastiness out of there. So just turn the motor over till the valve is closed so that way everything will blow back out of here. All right, I just found this reducer. Look at there, looky there. We got treads, all right. So we're gonna cover one more little thing while we're waiting on parts. I don't know if y'all remember, but my brother Farrell, now oh, we gotta get serious now. My brother Farrell gave me a bunch of manuals. And I went and I looked through them manuals out there in my mobile home house, and I found the Wisconsin manual for this engine. And you know what? There's some interesting stuff in there, and I know you're gonna like it, especially you, you folks up there in Canada and out there in Australia and England, where a lot of my fans all might. Get on with it, Mike! Come on, stop with the bits and bobs! All right, you ready? You guys ready? All right, y'all ready? Here we go, here it is. <gasps> World's largest builders of heavy duty air-cooled engines, Wisconsin. So the one that's on the Ride Master is an AKN. So this covers these models, which covers three to six and a half horsepower. Most horsepower hours, Wisconsin, heavy duty air cooled engines, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I thought it was Milwaukee, Idaho. 
So it explains everything in here about these engines. There's a couple interesting things I found. Like the way the governor works. It's got a weird governor setup. Where is that governor setup? Let me find it. Right here. It's got some kind of rod and spring type deal. There's the Mupkin, see? That's how the original Mupkin was. This one's a little different. Looks like it's coming straight out. Eh, I don't think so. I think it's that 45. Yeah, it's that 45. There, there it is, governor. Isn't that weird? Governor system. Unless that's an oil pump, but it says governor. Governor of the centrifugal flyball type controls the engine speed by varying the throttle opening to shoot the load imposed upon the engine. So, gotten to the back. It's got all the different ignition stuff, Fairbanks Morse. Now one person commented like, where do you find all these manuals, Carol? Where do you get these manuals? Well, you gotta hunt for them. I got a friend, Pat, who's helping me on another project that we're gonna do videos on. And uh, he hunts for manuals. He's a, he's a cornucopia of knowledge on this stuff and he's been helping me tremendously on this upcoming project. And we'll explain that in the upcoming project. So you're gonna have to watch. So here it goes into the carpetrators. Yeah, here's another Wyco electric. That was another ignition, the Wyco ignition. Fairbanks Morris, Wyco. And now the carpetrators, Zenith Stromberg. That's what's on my uh, Triumph Spitfire's got a Stromberg on it. Must be uh, popular now over there in England, eh? You got those strong bugs over there in England and Australia? I bet you do, mate. Zenith. Now, I don't know, maybe y'all know. One of those same people made TVs. Zenith Carpet Carpetrator Division, Aviator Corporation, Bendix Aviator Aviation Corporation. Hart Street, Detroit, Michigan. And this is the carpet trader we got, the Marvel Schlebler. Must be a couple of dudes, Marvel and Schlebler. All right, so this is the part that I'm gonna tell you about, that I'm gonna surprise you with. So in the back, let me find a page, come on. In the back, approve service stations. And in the first section is every state in the union. Now I'm going fast, because you're probably going, huh, 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 stop at my state. Well, I don't know what state you live in. Then we get to Canada, hey, hey, hey. Hey, Canada, hey. Eh? So we're gonna pause here for a minute. He's gonna zoom in on that. And you might wanna hit pause on your computer. And let me know if any of these places are still in business or if you remember them. Here's one in uh, Nova Scotty. I know you're saying, that ain't Nova Scotty, it's Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. You know people are calling it Nova Scotty. Or Scotia. You live in Nova Scotia? And then here's this other part with Ontario. Prince Edward Island, Quebec. 
Saskatchewan. That's where Bigfoot is. I wonder if these places are still in business or if you remember y'all. So you can pause it. I hope you can see it enough. And they sold these engines all over the world. I know you guys like this stuff. It's like taking a walk down memory lane. Here we go to worldwide. Here we are, Australia. Not many. Here in Tasmania. Look like Eric E. Howard was the, the big dude in Tasmania. He was the Tasmanian devil, they called him. Eric Howard, Tasmanian devil. Here's some other countries. Maybe you guys are watching from there. And then England, you guys are uh, pretty weak. Only one place in England. How are you on that's an equipment? I remember that place. Pavilion walks, more line, stains, and Middlesex. Stains, you know, poop stains. And then here's some other countries. But they sold these all over the world. So this is kind of cool. I thought this was cool. And I just wonder if any of these places are still in business. So the next time you see this thing, I'm gonna have it, have this cover back on. We're gonna have it full of fresh gear lubricant. And I'm gonna have the new muffkin on. And then we're gonna See how fast it goes when, once we can kick it into that second gear now that we got that figured out. I went ahead and redid the air filter a little bit. They had it painted that John Deere green. So I went ahead and painted it yellow. And then I kind of cleaned up this part, ground off all the flashing from when they casted it, kind of smoothed it out, sandblasted it and then clear coated it and then here's my muffkin I know nothing fancy so I just put a three-quarter street L in there and took a Briggs muffkin and then added the little flapper valve kind of give it a mini a mini tractor exhaust look I don't know how it sounds yet because we got to get it running so I'm thinking about color scheme how I'm going to paint this up now we looked up the Boland's color, the green, and they had three different greens. One green is kind of like a metallic -y green, almost like this, this green here, which I think is ugly. And then another green they got is like a John Deere green, real close to a John Deere green. And I don't care for that either because then it's gonna look too much like a John Deere. Then they got like a dark forest green, and I like that. But the ones I've seen that are restored, you know, it's mostly green. There's not enough yeller in it. So I want to add a lot more yeller to it. So I'm probably going to do the tins. I said probably. The tins on the engine in yeller. I'm probably going to do the engine block in black. I'll do all this in that dark green. And I'm gonna do this, this is a separate piece here. I'm probably gonna do that in yellow. I'll do the gas tank in green. I'll probably do this in yellow. Do the chain in black. You know, I gotta have some black in there too to kind of break it up. And then any kind of control lever, like the throttle lever, I'll probably do in yeller. The forward and reverse, I'll probably do in yeller. The attachment lever, I'll probably do in yeller. And as you can see, the one that's just the transmission, I already did in yeller. And then the hubs, see how they painted these hubs black, or I mean green? 
I'm gonna do them in black and I'm gonna do them in black on here and then I'll do the transmission in green and the rest of the frame in green so I think with that more yellow in there it'll give them more color because like I said I seen some that I restored it's just like too much green too much green in there and the weight over there that big counterweight that hangs off the back of the transmission I'm gonna do that in yellow too and I'll do the seat in yellow so you'll see you'll like it gonna break it up some some black green and yellow is going to be the three main colors all right so remember that cable I mentioned that snapper clutch brake cable well here I went and bought one remember I said they're about seven dollars on on the inner screen see how it's got the crimped ends on there let me rip this out of the bag now this is a rotary number that 2699 so chances are the ones you're going to buy on the inner screen is going to be the rotary one probably not going to be the OEM uh, snapper one because that one's like $26 so this is that cable see how it's got the the end that's molded on the cable and then it's got these for that brake however that works on that snapper for one of those rear engine snappers you know that force gump mower that's what this cable's for force gump mower and look it's about the same thickness as this one it looks like to be exactly the same thickness. so all you'd have to do is route it through route it through here and then cut this end off cut one end off and slide these off and just stick it in that in that carriage bolt because it's long enough they actually make another one of these that's a little bit shorter but it's more money so you might as well get this one so we had time so I thought I'd buy one because I had to wait for that double roller chain to come in and some other stuff for this so there's that cable so I went and I had to buy double roller chain and it only comes in a 10 foot length so I had to buy 10 feet of it it was only like 30 bucks so I measured it out against the old one here's the old one here's the new one so I already pre-cut it came with a new master link I got the gear I got a new piece of 1 8 key stock for the gear because the other piece of key in there was kind of wore. And then I started thinking, you know, the hardware that held that cover on the back, the one I made the gasket for, I had stainless bolts. So I'm going to use stainless hardware to hold that cover back on. And then I got me a stainless bolt that holds that counterweight because this is the bolt that held that counterweight on this 5 8 bolt so I went to fasten all and got me one in stainless and they wanted me to buy 10 of these 5 8 nuts they wouldn't break open a bag so but they had an open bag of jam nuts so I bought a couple of jam nuts so this is to keep the bolt from turning when you're trying to take that weight on and off and you can see this thing is corroded look at it it's all ate away so I made a new one which I'm gonna put on here and it fits tight so I'll have to press it on there so it'll be nice and tight and that's going to hold the counterweight on. So now that we got our chain and our hardware, I can go ahead and put the chain on, put the cover on, then I can fill it with the gear oil. Now I got the gear oil. The 90 weight non-EP gear oil. And Napa had it, and they had it in stock. It's mineral gear oil, so it's non-EP. So you don't have to worry about it eating up those yellow gears, yellow metal gears. 
And that's what this is for. It's a GL1 gear oil. That's what you want. And it's recommended for lubrication of transmissions, differentials, and final drives requiring an API GL1 gear oil. Universal joint splines, blah, 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 but it's for antique stuff is what it's for. And it's also for transmissions and gearboxes that don't have a lot of tight tolerances, which means, you know, tend to leak. This is what they want you to use. So this is it, it's 90 weight, and that's what it said to use in that manual. A 90 weight, non-EP. So we can get it at Napa. It was like uh, almost $20 for a gallon. Because I don't know how much this thing holds. Probably don't hold that much, but they didn't have it in court. All right. So now we got everything cleaned up. Drop the chain in. And I gotta spin it. Now you can tie a wire to it. I got me a piece of coat hanger with a hook on it so I can grab it and pull it through. We'll just leave it on the side. Now here's my repair with the tarot putty. Remember I said this busted out in the back and that snap ring came out? Well there was still plenty of groove left on that snap ring. So I got that snap ring back in the groove, locked it in, and then I cleaned it real good and put some tarot putty on there. So what I did is I, I took it and I wound it up, I rolled it out like a worm and I pressed some on there and it didn't want to stick real good even after I cleaned it. I cleaned it with brake cleaner and stuff. And I stuck it in there, kind of stuck it as best I could and then I pulled it off. And when I looked at the putty, it had extracted a bunch of more boogers out of there. And then I took some more tarot putty and I made another rope out of it. Rolled it out, made another rope and that's what I stuck in there. Oh, and look, it didn't hold either. It's too impregnated with contaminants. Well, good thing that happened now. All right, now we're ready to install the gear. I got my new piece of key. And my new snap ring that was missing and we never did find it was probably in that nasty fecal matter that was in the bottom of the transmission. Let's make sure that's locked in there in that groove. Seems like we got a little bit of play in there. And I noticed that the shaft was kind of spinning on the inside of that bearing. So I got a thin spring washer I think I'm going to stick behind here to put a little pressure on this. That'll probably help. Let me go find it. Alright, I dug in my collection of spring washers. That's why I got to save all this stuff. You never know. And I found one that fit on there. Look, nice and springy tight. All right, let's get this chain hooked up. Let's get that gear oil put in there. Now you'll see that chain was stretched a little bit. See, see how taunt it is now? You know, it was only what, 60 some years old. So let me get the master link in put the back cover on and all the bolts, fill it up with gear oil, get the tires back on. We'll fire it up and see how fast it goes in second gear now. 
I went online, went to the inner screen, and I found a place that's got friction material. And I told them what we are doing, and our friends at Rochester Clutch and Brake in Rochester, New York, actually it's Victor, New York, but they call it Rochester, it must be near Rochester, told them what we were doing, and they were kind enough to send us some samples of friction material. He sent me three different types, three different hardnesses. So I'm gonna have three different discs made for that ride master. I'm gonna take a four inch hole saw and cut me out some discs and I'll take them over to my friend Dan and have him recreate them. So, our friends over there at Rochester Clutch and Brake, go to their website, www.rochesterclutch.com. Check them out. If you need to get some friction material for something you're working on, they got all different kinds. You can even send them stuff. You need brakes or something made, special brakes they don't have anymore. They can bond it to it and all that stuff. Contact them and they'll, they'll help you out like they did Terrell. So um, here's our friction material. So be on the lookout in the future here. We're gonna see which one works the best. And then you can go from there in case you're wanting to quiet up your ride master. Okay, I got it all back together. So I wanted to share a couple of little tips and tricks in case you got one of these. When I went to put that back cover on, that cover is pretty heavy. So I went and cut me a half inch bolt and made a stud and then screwed it into the back cover, into the back of the trans. And then I was able to hang the cover on that stud. So this kind of held the cover for me. Like I said, that cover was real heavy and then trying to position the gasket and everything. So remember that little trick, use a stud. And then I also made one for these wheels because they use long 7 16 spine thread bolts to hold the wheels on. And then you got that spacer and you're trying to, trying to hold all that stuff at one time. So this is the same bolt they use to hold uh, the PTO clutches on lawnmowers, the electric clutch. So when we junk mowers, I save all these bolts. So I had a long one in there, I cut the head off. Same thing, screwed it into the transmission, put the spacer on, slid the wheel over this stud, and then it held it for me, and then I put the ones in there. And then I put uh, never seize on all the threads. And you should do that when you work with stainless steel too. So I got it all back together, fired it up, and went into gear. I got it into, into the second gear and took it for a ride. It's loud with that little muffkin on there. It's real loud. So what I think I might do is take another one of these Briggs muffkins. The only reason I use this type of muffkin is because it's three quarter thread, like everything else on that engine. I didn't want to have to go from a three quarter to a one inch muffkin. So what I think I'm gonna do is cut the top of this off, cut the bottom of that off, and I'm gonna weld two of these together and make it kind of taller and see if that quiet, quiet it down some. And then I went and put gas in it and uh, was going to try to kick up the speed because it wasn't running at 3,600. And all of a sudden gas just started peeing out the carburetor, peeing out all over the place. So then I had to pull the carburetor off. And here it is over here on the bench. So, took it all apart, and I found some more stuff, like this rod. Look at that, it's almost wore all the way through. So, good thing I got that manual, it's got part numbers in it. Uh-oh, money's here. Now, as I was saying before we were rudely interrupted by these pesky customers who were trying to pay my bills. Look at this rod, it's all wore out. So, good thing I got that manual, like I said, 
So I was able to look up the part number, and of course, found one. You know where? No, not Amazon, eBay. So I found one on eBay. And the choke shaft, look at that. It's all wore down. Found one of them too. Yep, no, not on Etsy, eBay. Found one on eBay. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this seat out because I got a feeling because there wasn't a lot of uh, excrement in there. I got a feeling the excrement is under here. And it's hard to see in there. It looks like something in there. What happened to my flight? There it is. Mr. Cameraman. Oh yeah, here we go, watch, it's gonna poop, it's gonna take a poop, oh, look at all that poop. You know what, that actually looks like poop, those look like mouse turds. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this all off real good. Put it back together with these bad parts until the new ones come in because after we do this test drive here, after I show you the test drive, next thing is going to be starting to disassemble it all. Because if everything works, you know, there's not much to it. Now we need to disassemble it and get it painted. So you're not going to see it for a long time after this video. Because it's going to have to come apart and get painted and then put back together. But as long as all the mechanicals are working, that's what it's going to be, so be a while before you see the finished product. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, put it all back together, put it back on there, and then we're gonna, what do we do? Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Yeah, shut up. Another thing I got ready is I got the slugs ready for our friction discs that we're gonna make, our new ones. So I took a four inch hole saw which I mounted in my drill press, and then I rigged up my shop vac to it. Now this stuff gets kind of dusty, so I don't know if you're gonna be making one of these or not, but I put on an N95 mask. Where did I put my mask? There it is. I put on an N95 mask, and then I rigged this up to this block of wood had my shop back on and it worked really good. It sucked all that dust right off of there. Cause I don't know what's in this stuff, but I don't want to be breathing it. And I'm sure you shouldn't be breathing it. So these are ready. Now I can take that pulley off, and take those friction discs off and take them over to that friend of mine and have them machine them to be just exactly like that. So I guess that's what they're going to call me. They call me the clutch disc man. I guess that's what I am. They call me the clutch dish man. I guess that's what I am. All right, what are we gonna do? Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up.
Well, there you have it. Got the ride master going, gearbox, mechanically everything's good. So what you're gonna see next will be the clutch disc experiments that we're gonna do. We're gonna see what clutch disc material after I get those discs made. We're gonna see which ones work the best. So in case you guys out there that got ride masters wanna get rid of those brass ones or maybe have some made, you know, like I'm doing. Maybe you don't have them at all and you might wanna get a hold of me and if maybe you had that friend of mine make them for you or something. Or somebody with a CNC machine might be even interested in making them, we could sell them. But anyway, that's what we're gonna do next. The friction discs, and then after that, we're gonna tear it all down and start painting it and, you know, get it all, all restored. All right, what are you doing sitting on the ride master? Oh. Get back to work! What do you think, it's funny? <laughs> So that's it for part three. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terra Fixes All. There I am, that's me. Let me move my spark plug neck here. I got a boogie right here. Follow me with your ride masters on Facebook and Instagram. Come on. Go to our web store, buy some Terra apparel. Wanna look good on your ride master. And as always, there's your dinner. Well, he said it this time. Woo! I guess that's what they're going to call me. They call me the clutch this man. I guess that's what I am. They call me the clutch this man. I guess that's what I am.